Okay, so this is a DC motor. Uh, I'm going to start out with measuring the couple of batteries that I put in series. And of course, should come out with three volts, and it's 2.99 volts. Now I'm going to hook these to the DC motor. give the rotating part an initial push, there it goes. So I'm putting electrical energy in and I'm going to get mechanical energy out of it. I'm trying to make it as fast as possible, I guess. I don't think that goes any faster, does it? That's probably a tough point there. Okay, um, I'm going to measure the um, current here in just a moment, but first I'm going to determine how fast this is rotating, and that's why I used the strobe light for. I put a black piece of tape on there, um, so that when I use the strobe light, if you could turn off the light, then I can see. Okay, um, here I kind of have it standing, I don't know if this shows up on the film. Uh, pretty close to standing here, but I see the tape twice. That means I catch it um, twice per rotation. So I'm going to go to double the rotation. There we go. Oh, that's pretty close. Okay, now I could have the light back so I can read actually what my frequency is. I'm at. Um, 2,000 rotations per minute, and of course I have to convert it per second, so divide 2,000 by 60. I need a couple um, other numbers to, to work with. One of them would be the current, but for that one I have to unhook the batteries because I have to measure the current inside the circuit. Here we go. Let's see. Don't report this just yet. 1 1.18, 1.07, 1.08, 1.12, 1.10. So it's jumping a little bit around, but I want a 1.2, 1.17, somewhere around there, probably average maybe 1.15 amps is what I get from this one. And then I have to take one more measurement which is what is called the stoppage time and what I do here is I put a certain amount of energy into it but of course <coughs> excuse me, due to the law of inertia the thing would just keep rotating but of course it loses energy due to friction that's why I need to put in more energy so by measuring the amount of friction that slows it down it also will tell me in return how much energy I need to put in uh, re respectively that it's using up so I'm going to stop this one here and count the seconds and that stoppage time then eventually will tell me how much energy it's using up, which in turn will tell me how much energy it needs to be put in. Okay, and this was going to be in the neighborhood of just a couple or three seconds or so. So if you could look at it and kind of give me a good estimate how many seconds it needs to stop. Okay, ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Yeah, about three seconds. That's that's what I figured. Okay, with that, I'm I'm actually virtually done here. Just one more thing. Um, I have to look at my rotating part here. It of course takes takes energy, and I may not want to call it kinetic energy. I may want to call it rotational energy. Um, but rotational energy depends on the shape that I have, and that's a cylindric this a cylinder. Um, with a rotation axis through the middle, and that's what I would have to look up um, in the in the book where it says that a rod whose axis goes to the middle takes on a uh, moment of inertia of one twelfth the mass times the radius squared. On the lab sheet itself, um, the mass is already listed for for the rotating body for the rotating rod here at one hundred seven grams. We need that because. Um, rotational energy, any kind of energy, um, depends on the mass of, of the body and I had taken that apart a long time before and measured that. 
Um, the radius of it is respectively the, the length is 50 millimeters in this case. And then pretty much we have everything else and we can do all the calculations. Okay, thank you. This recording shows a sample calculation for the lab on heat engines. And I'm going to do that for the DC motor. And there's a lot of data to fill in, and most of them actually come from the video that I produced. So let's get started on this one. Um, the first one that I want to do here is actually um, the energy that that is be um, that enters the system. In this case, it's electrical energy. Of course, it says on the top heat engines. Um, so for the for the steam engine and the Stirling engine, that would be um, actually the heat that goes in from the dry fuel, the aspid for the steam engine, and the um, ethanol for the Stirling engine. But here, it's electrical energy going in. Okay, um, I measured in the video 2.99 volts, and I measured in the video um, 1.15 amps, and then um, technically I would have to wait until the batteries are used up because um, that would be the total time. But of course, I, I that would take quite a long time so I'm just using a token time of um, 10 minutes or 600 seconds and this is the only time that the that the um, total time um, goes into the heat input or the energy input and as it turns out as it always goes into the work output um, because now it appears twice it actually cancels out so it actually doesn't matter if I take 600 seconds or if I take 10 seconds but in any case I put it in there so we can come up with nice numbers here multiplying these three numbers comes out to 2060 joules rounded or 2100 joules either one of those numbers okay 2060 joules then I'm gonna take that 2060 joules and I'm actually gonna put it right I'm just gonna, trying to get there just right there we go, right there. 2,060 joules. So that's the energy in. Okay, now the work output. Um, the work output is the rotational energy of the cylindrical part that is um, rotating on the DC motor. And for the rotational energy, that would have to depend on how fast it rotates, what kind of shape it is. That's the moment of inertia coming up in a moment, and um, the mass it has. And I, at some point, I had measured it to 107 grams, so that of course is 0 0.107 kilograms. And I have to convert that because everything has to be in base units, so that at the end we're going to come up with base unit for energy, the joule. Um, it has a length of um, 50 millimeters, the two inches there, so that's 0 0.05 uh, meters. Then the shape of the rotating part that was a rod or um, a stick or a cylinder and the correct equation for that one would then be the 1 12th times mass times length squared. So here's the 1 12th. I'm going to copy this over here. There. And now I'm going to plug in the numbers. Again, I, I left um, these little dots here because depending on which engine you're working with, you might have to use 112, 1, or 1 half. So that's why I'm not writing it down. In any case, on the calculator, I'm going to write down now 1 over 12 times the mass, 0 0.107 times the length, 0 0.05 squared, don't forget the square, comes out with a really small number, point four zeros, one, two, three, four, because the first two appears in the fifth decimal, and then two, two, I guess I can just call it, not too many um, significant figures to be used, I guess I don't get that all on one. 
No, I don't get it all in one line. Okay, so the moment of inertia is 0 0.00022 kilograms meters squared. Uh, it's that small because the base units are relatively large, kilograms a meter squared, while the rotating part itself is pretty small. Okay, in the video, I measured a frequency of 2,000 rounds per minute, which I divide by 60 because again I have to have base units um, so per second which is the Hertz so 33 Hertz actually I could do that over here too on my calculator there it is 2000 divided by 60 33 um, I don't have to be too accurate uh, because a lot of those numbers are really just measured to two significant figures some of them are even just me measured to one significant figure um, the angle of velocity is 2 pi times the frequency. That's because the it's rotating 33 times per second, which means it goes through an angle of 360 degrees. But um, we have to use the competing um, angle measure of 2 pi. And you may remember that from the circumference of a circle. So it's 2 pi. Um, find it on my calculator, 2 pi times 33 and that comes out to 207 Hertz. Now the rotational energy um, looks like the kinetic energy which would be one half mv squared. The rotational energy is one half i um, omega squared. So it's going to be one half times the point zero 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 two two times 207 squared and that comes out to 0.47 joules. So when it's rotating at its fastest of 33 Hertz it um, has a rotational energy of 0.47 joules. The stoppage time we had measured to three seconds. There, there is the thing about the one significant figure. Um, we that was just really a rounded number, which means that the end result will also have just um, one significant figure. There was no point of making it any more accurate than that. Okay, with that, I'm gonna um, calculate the power supplied, which is rotational energy, the 0.47 joules, divided by. I'm sorry, minus zero. Um, so that's when it stopped, of course. I just put that in there to show that, well, it stopped. And of course, um, that's zero. Divide by the stoppage time of three seconds. So that's around at 0.16 watts. And the watt is the same as joules per second. So that means that every second, 0.16 joules is supplied to keep the um, the, the rod um, rotating um, because of inertia um, you could actually turn it off and it should keep rotating but of course it doesn't because of friction and that's why I'm measuring that I'm turning it off and it um, slows down to zero and then I need an extra 0.16 um, joules per second to um, maintain it rotating actually and um, in that way I calculate with the friction I actually calculate how much work it absorbs respectively that's the output and so this roundabout way then gets me the amount of work that is actually supplied um, to the rotating part okay the total time um, those are the 600 seconds and the total energy used then would be 0.16 times 600 and that comes out to 96 joules and now I compare 96 joules to 2060 so the work that was output to the heat or in this case electrical energy that was input um, comes out to 0.046 and um, I have to shift the decimal point so it's actually 4.66 or with one significant figure just 5% is the efficiency of the DC motor. Now what you would have to do is watch the videos for the other two engines and use the data that are given in the video 
and do the same calculations that I did here, coming up with the same efficiencies. Um, not the same, but coming up with the efficiencies for those and um, also calculating the heat input. Notice that the formulas are a little bit more complicated than they are for the DC motor. Okay, this is the Stirling engine and I just measured out 10 milliliters of ethanol that I'm going to pour in here and that one's going to be quite full. Okay, minus one, so it's going to be 9 milliliters of, of ethanol. Um, it's not exactly 9 grams, it's probably in the neighborhood of 8 grams because the density of ethanol of course is not 1 unlike that for water. As I put this cap on here, probably some ethanol will seep out. In fact, it does. Could you? Oh, there it is. Because um, I don't necessarily want to get the fire on the table, even though these lab tables are made for withstanding fire. And then the rest ethanol that I have left here, I may want to remove that before I Start the flame. Okay. Because once I start a fire here on the side, then more and more ethanol will seep out. And it's going to make it not look good. So there we go. That'll take a moment. Okay, let's see. For the Stirling engine, I guess at some point I was able to take this apart. Either that, or I just determined that, that these are aluminum, these discs, and um, figured out what the dimensions are, and that's how I came up with the 36 grams for each of these. So for a total of 72 grams, or 0 .07, 0 .07. 72 kilograms. Um, the radius, if if you look at it, well, looks almost like an like an inch here. That's why I wrote down 28 millimeters. Um, it's it's a disc, as you can see. Um, so again, you have to look up in, in the book. You come up with the one half mr squared for the uh, moment of inertia, and then of course we're going to measure the frequency once it gets going and the stoppage time. And this time we're going to measure the total time. Uh, respectively, a total time is going, probably going to be in the neighborhood of 10 minutes, so I'll write that down in, in the caption of, uh, for this video. Um, yeah, I'm just going to let it heat up here. It, it basically just works by air. I, I put the ethanol as my fuel here, but that heat up, heats up the air that sits inside the cylinders, and then it's the expanding air that will push out the uh, piston. So it's still a heat engine, it's just not a steam engine. There we go. In fact, at this point, I'm going to start the clock, and it says yeah, pretty much 9.15 here. We're probably going to be in a neighborhood of 10 minutes or so, we'll see. And again, I, I put a little white mark on here. I believe I did. Oh, it's a little black mark. Where I can use the strobe light, so if, if somebody can turn off the light, I, I don't actually know if that with the strobe light if that shows up on, on the camera. So yeah, that's pretty stable right there. I could turn the light back on, and then I can read. I come up with 1300 rounds per minute, which means again divide by 60 in order to get it the frequency in hertz. Okay, um, the other thing that I need is the stoppage time. And I'm going to blow out the flame and we're going to count the second how long it takes to stop. And here we go, one, two, three. How much was it? Yeah. Okay, about 10 seconds. It. 
So stoppage time is 10 seconds. And then except for the total time, I pretty much have determined everything and uh, we can do the calculations on this one. Okay, thanks because the rest would be now So this is steam engine. Uh, I'm gonna light this one here. This is um, S called Espit. It's um, dry camping fuel. Usually you use you use it to heat up a cup of tea or a cup of soup as you go camping. But it's nice for this steam engine as well. When, when these steam engines are sold, these toy steam engines are sold in Germany, it usually comes with a package of Espit because it's German too. You have to be careful pushing it in here because my particular steam engine, it gets stuck and then it's a heck of a time trying to get it back out. Um, I put distilled water in here and perhaps it shows up on, on the video screen. I put about a half to three quarters in there. Um, not too little because then, then I don't have enough water left um, and not too much because then I'm heating too much and I'm wasting too much energy. Um, this will take a while here anyway to, to heat up. By the way, I'm, I'm using distilled water so that um, so that it doesn't clog up the pipe that is running through here. So I have the boiler over here. Um, I close the valves. The pipe is running through here and then over here to, to the cylinder and the piston, which then will turn a flywheel eventually. Once there's steam coming out and condensation showing up here, it's ready to go. But I believe that will take still a couple of minutes. Um, I have to make sure that I put this chimney on here. It's very important. Because it doesn't do anything. Um, I also can play a little bit around and hook up perhaps this little toy chainsaw. This is going a little bit beyond of, of what's on the lap sheet. So I could hook up this one here and if I wanted. I just have to kill those two minutes here anyway. And um, which which match was it that I just used to light that? Oh, it's, it's in there, in the right? So, so I'm going to use another match. And I could actually use this, this little saw here in order to saw the match that I just used into two pieces. That's the power I get out of this toy steam engine. Um, I'm going to hook it, gonna hook it here for a moment. Um, I have to look at my sheet. So for the steam engine, I, yeah, I I remember well that I'm not able to take off the wheel here. So I just determined that this one here is perhaps cast iron. And I measured the dimensions and came up with a mass of roughly 100 grams, 4 ounces. And if you look at that thing here, and you would imagine that you could weigh it in your hand, that looks like kind of 4, four ounces, 100 grams. Um, the radius is easy to measure, 34 millimeters, so that's a little less than an inch and a half. Um, the shape of the rotating part, well, it's a hoop, so you have to look that up in, in the book and it comes out that the moment of inertia for that one is 1 times mass times radius squared. Um, the spokes here, they also take um, up some of some rotational energy and I could calculate it and perhaps I should, but I kind of said, oh, I'm just going to have rounded numbers here anyway, so I'm going to leave that out. Um, and again, I'm going to do the same thing as I did with, with the Stirling engine and the DC motor. I'm going to determine the frequency with the strobe light. I put a little white mark on here. And did you say earlier I should turn that eventually like this in order to do that? Sideways as well. Like this here? Yeah. Or this way? Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's see. And then eventually the stoppage time at that point, I'm actually going to just pull this one out here. This one should be... That might still work. I'm sure it's hot. Well, there's a little bit coming out. Hope this works. Um, so yeah, I'm going to determine um, the frequency here and the stoppage time and the total time eventually. We're not going to have that video that long, so again, I'm going to make a caption on, on the video and say, well, this is how long it ran for. Um, yeah, and I guess 
now we're just gonna wait just uh, just keep filming those uh, few more seconds here and I can try to give this a push but there's no steam coming out yet so it's kind of futile okay who, who brought me a mocha this morning station. It's the 1300 I had from earlier. By the way, um, just just in case I'm gonna go to twice the frequency, just in case I actually catch it only every other round. But if at twice the frequency I get the white flag twice, like I do right now, well then I know that I'm too fast and I'm twice too fast, so I'm gonna go back to the original. Yeah, about 1,300 rounds per minute. So eventually that has to be divided by 60. Okay, for the stoppage time, I'm just gonna pull this one out here without blowing it up. So, okay, ready? One, two, three. Pretty nifty. I didn't even have to give it a push. Okay, with that, as I said, I'm, I'm gonna post the um, caption. Keep keep it rolling, though. I'm gonna put um, post the total time later on as a caption. I'm actually virtually done here, except I can hook up my. I'm a little toyer, and let's see what this one does. this time. I think if I actually hook this up to the Stirling engine it might do it.
It wants to. I think I get a little bit more power out of the Sterling engine than it actually puts on a matchstick into a couple of pieces. Okay, thank you.